Hello everyone, welcome back to another video from Shomus Biology. In this video, we are going to talk about the top 5 PhD topic ideas for botany graduate. If you have done your botany graduation and masters in botany and now it's time for you to do PhD in botany, good choice. But what are the research topic ideas? People get stuck in the selection of the research topic ideas. There are so many things to talk about. Now what are the topics that you should choose based on the complexity level, based on the uh, subsidiary interdisciplinary biological topics and subjects of your expertise and also important thing is whether your research will be directly impacting our life, how much it is related to our day-to-day -day life handling, how much it is important to human welfare is something that we are going to discuss and I am going to share five such topics, five such topic ideas that a botany graduate and botany postgraduate can choose to do PhD on. So let's start. Start with the very first topic. It is CRISPR based gene editing for enhancing drought resistance in indigenous crop varieties. Mouthful of name, right? But try to understand, break it one step at a time. CRISPR Cas9 system is utilized here. So, CRISPR based gene editing. And how exactly this CRISPR based gene editing can enhance drought tolerance feature in our crop so that our crop becomes drought tolerance and they can grow even in worst situations of the weather right so the complexity level here will be really high because it requires molecular tools and field validations so people uh, who will choose to do phd in this particular topic need to do in field work and also requires molecular tools uh, and molecular tool analysis skills to pull this off the next thing is the scope. It is uh, for all those who are from molecular biology, genetics and crop science, agricultural biosciences, all these discipline students can enter in this particular field. The third thing, why it matters. With uh, water, the, the, the scarcity intensifying globally and we know that water deficiency is one of the biggest challenges that we are about to face in the upcoming decade and uh, we are drying up the water the the earth is get rid of portable water not the salty water but the portable water that we consume the water that the plants can uptake and editing native crop like millets or pulses to tolerate those drought ensures food security without relying on GMOs because we have products where we tweak the genetics of plants and we make genetically modified organisms but they have some side effects and they have ethical concerns but beyond that point if with the help of genomic editing with the help of CRISPR-Cas9 we can reach uh, and we can modify our existing local millet and pulse varieties to become drought tolerant. That is what we are looking for. And the direct human welfare is that uh, it promotes sustainable agriculture, reduces farmer dependency on irrigation systems and strengthens the climate resilience in agriculture. That benefit not only uh, one particular type, but if we can crack it down for one, two, three varieties of seeds of let's say millet or pulse, then we can apply it to all the different categories, all the different locations across our country to develop our agriculture. The second important point I would say, phytoremediation of potential of native plant, phytoremediation potential of native plant species in heavy metal concentrated soil. And we are polluting this world like hell. We are polluting the water, we are polluting the soil and eventually if the water is polluted, the soil is going to be polluted too. The soil is filled with heavy lead, metals like uh, lead is there uh, because you know the battery industries they dispose this lead and we are talking about renewable energy and when you go to lead acid batteries, the lead is going to be heavy metal, the mercury is going to be heavy. So this lead, mercury, cadmium, these are heavy metals that will be found in the soil. So this lead, mercury, cadmium type of heavy metals that is present in the soil is very toxic for the plants so what so the complexity do? level here is high it requires analytical chemistry and field trials and nowadays most of the researchers that they, they want to work in lab uh, from the comfort of the lab environment but actually for these kind of jobs you need to study in field you need to collect data 
as a result of the crop yield and management and measurement of that in field or field trials are involved. So that's why it will be a little challenging, a little hard. Scope, environmental botany, soil science and plant physiology candidates can get into this particular field. Why it matters? Industrial waste and mining activities have degraded the soil fertility. Native plants may offer low-cost, eco-friendly, like the native plants that we have, we have a foolproof plan that the plants will grow in this particular environment in that area with the type of uh, rain that it, it has, if the type of temperature it faces, right? So we don't need to change much. We only need to make them drought tolerance. We need to make them tolerant against this uh, heavy metals. How do we make it? We need to incorporate those areas of the plant genome which can help the plant to irradiate all this heavy metals and once the, they can eradicate these heavy metals the phytoremediation can be uh, in place so it restores the degraded land reduces the health hazards from the toxic metals that is present in the soil and it improves the agriculture productivity in affected zones as well so the polluted soil can even give a rise to plant species and plants can fight against those heavy metal poisoning that is present there in that environment with the help of the phytoremediation now let's move to the third topic here ethnobotanical documentation and conservation of medicinal plants in threatened tribal forest ecosystem now, this is a topic where it has a moderate complexity, comparatively less complexity. It involves field work, of course, taxonomy and cultural studies. So people from classical botany background will enjoy this kind of study where the scope is from ethnobotany, conservation biology and pharmacognosy. Okay? What, why it matters? Many tribal remedies uh, are present. Uh, and those remedies are from plant, uh, their source is plant. Still now in India, even in 2025, there are uh, places in India where people completely rely on tribal remedies. They rely on the plant-based medicines, herbal treatments, crude herbal, uh, herbal treatments, not naturopathic farms or nothing like that, but crude raw format plants as their treatment protocol. And the habitat loss and lack of documentation ultimately leads to uh, the loss of this informative gold mine data that we need and we can implement to a much regulative way to generate nutraceutical farms and generate medicines that can have direct impact in our life, particularly in our chronic conditions. So in human welfare, it preserves a traditional knowledge that we had for th for thousands of years and enables drug discovery, new drug discovery is possible and modification of the existing drugs are also possible. And it protects the endangered plant species and indigenous healthcare systems that is pre-existing in, in a country like India. So for it's a, such an Indian context, this particular topic is going to be perfectly fit for doing PhD in classical botany background. The next, the fourth topic for doing PhD in botany, exploring algae based biofuel production from local strains in wastewater system. Now, there are two contexts in this particular topic. One is the exploring uh, algae based biofuel production. This is completely different and bigger zone of research. And next one is uh, exploring this algae based uh, biofuel production from wastewater systems. So, there are algae, algal growth in the wastewater system. We want to harvest those algae they leave in the wastewater uh, system not in the fresh water or in the fresh ecosystems so what we are doing we are managing two situations here the extra algal growth in the wastewater can be reduced with the help of this technology and the second thing is that we can produce a biofuel which adds to the sustainability so it's a two-way system that can be answered with one research project like this. The complexity level will be moderate to high. It needs biochemistry, an integral understanding of biochemistry. Engineering interfaces will be there because we are about to deal with the wastewater management system. Scope, phycology, biotechnology and sustainable energy are the fields and fields of study will be interconnected. And uh, why it matters? Microalgae can convert wastewater into biomass and oil precursors and this biomass and oil precursors that is produced as a result of the wastewater treatment plant uh, almost at the end of it can be utilized as a raw material to produce biofuel 
right? So one extra element to the wastewater treatment plant can be generated which gives us raw material for the production of biofuel later on, okay? Human welfare impact reduces uh, reliance on fossil fuel because we want to move towards sustainable energy, green energy, clean energy and it offers renewable energy sources and provides wastewater treatment benefits to all the uh, wastewater treatment benefits can be added and also uh, it offers renewable energy sources, extra renewable energy sources and also the wastewater that is generated, we use it as a uh, raw material. So we are also reducing the extra byproduct of wastewater that is there. Right, so it's a win-win for both the situation. The last one and the fifth topic for doing PhD in botany background is impact, impact of, climate. of climate change on flowering phenology and pollination syndrome in Himal and Alpine flora. Now, in this case, we are trying to assess how exactly the climate change is going to alter uh, the the flowering phenology and the pollination syndrome in different flora across different altitude of Himalaya and Himalaya gives us huge variance of altitudes. There are different altitude gaps that are present and different kinds of plants with the flowering habits can be found in different locations of the Himalaya, in different altitudes of Himalaya, which we can figure out with the help of this. And this research will focus on impact of the climate change in different plant species growing in different altitudes of Himalaya, all right? So the complexity level will be high because uh, field analysis, field data collection is required in the Himalayan environment, which will be tough and uh, different seasons, different seasonal data understanding that will be really, really challenging, tough and also the expenditure for this research will be high. Next is the scope. Plant ecology, climate science and reproductive biology will be directly involved. Why it matters? Altered flowering times may disrupt the plant pollinator interactions, threatening the biodiversity and ecosystem uh, stability in the Himalayan region. Any, anything happens in the Himalaya mm, does not only restrict up to the Himalaya, it will spread to the other locations uh, next to the Himalayan region. So it will protect the fragile mountain ecosystems because the mountain ecosystems are very fragile and the people going in there and they're dumping their waste there even making it worse and it informs the conservation strategies and also anticipates the ecological disruptions in water and crop systems downstream of the Himalaya uh, downstream of the altitude of Himalaya that's why this is another topic to do PhD although it's not a very conventional one it's an unorthodox topic to do PhD but you can still consider it if you live near Himalayan place and if your research institute is near Himalaya where this kind of research can be funded can be provided with you can always try that hopefully you got the idea regarding the five most important topics of research idea for PhD in botany five research idea five PhD topics for doing PhD in botany and welfare so these are the five topics that you can try to form research proposal and if you want to form research proposal on these five topics you can uh, directly uh, contact us there is a service provided by us as an assignment helping service where we will guide you and help you to form this research proposal where you need some tweaking from your side to do it obviously it's chargeable it's paid uh, so you can try to do that uh, if you want to do it you can always contact us in this number 9804865119 and you can also visit our website for that and if you want to get into phd you know first of all you need to be eligible to do phd and to get eligible to do phd you need to qualify exam like csa and net or uh, the icmr jrf or you need to be qualified the isas and other phd entrance examinations and we prepare for those we have study materials for those we have online coaching for that so if you want to join that the link is also there in the description visit our website www.shomusbiology.com also download our app shomus biology and you'll get to know about all the details about our online coaching and csi and study material package which will definitely help you to secure JRF, Junior Research Fellowship, to do PhD in your respective field. So that's it. If you like this video, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends and colleagues and subscribe to this channel to get more videos like that in future. And also let me know in the comment which among these five topics that we shared you like the most. Thank you. Bye.